I usually don't stand, but I'm going to stand in this video because I'm very uncomfortable. Uh, anyway, um, I have I don't get requested a lot of videos at, at all. Like nobody requests videos of me, and so the number one video that I get requested is to create um, a menstrual cloth pad tutorial, and I'm definitely going to do that in my next video. Um, I'm going to show you how to create the template and the pad with a sewing machine, although you can sew it by hand as well. Um, the reason why I'm not going to do that in this video is because I am going to explain to you my flow and just how my entire menstrual cycle goes so that you understand why I'm choosing the fabrics that I'm choosing, why I'm doing everything that I'm doing, and I don't want to have to talk so much in the tutorial. I just want to talk about what it is to sew it instead of talking about flow and cycle and how much blood and that kind of thing that um, a pad can hold, okay? Firstly, let's let's get into the flow. Um, two weeks before my, my menstrual cycle begins, I'm actually cramping on and off for about two weeks. And um, I don't take any aspirin. I don't like the side effects of what aspirin does. And I try to just deal with my pain the way that it's given to me. Um, and it's not that bad. However, when my menstrual cycle does actually begin, let's explain day one. First of all, there's about a four to six hour period where I am in excruciating pain. I am in a ball under the covers. Then I take the covers off and I put them back on because I am having, I'm having like these heat attacks and then I'm having like these cold spells and then it's just like hot and cold and hot and cold. And second of all, I have lower back pain, like dramatically um cramps dramatically and for four to six hours i use the bathroom number two like six to eight times uh, no 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 it's really like six times my bad and that is horrible i'm also urinating a lot and so for that like four to six hour period period <laughs> I am not like really drinking or eating anything because I'm I'm so weak and I'm in bed and I'm lightheaded and I'm not, I'm not really doing anything um but then like after that like after that little like like spell is over I then um drink and resume everything like normal so on that day I will consider my blood flow to be medium right day two comes along this is my heaviest day of bleeding it's the day that I change my pads the most and relatively so all the other symptoms went away except for a few lower back pains and some cramps and then on day three um and four they're the same i relatively have no pain at all and i my blood flow is low and so i really only count my my, my menstruation cycle to be like four days however I do, I am still bleeding on day five and six, but it's so light that I don't wear a pad. I do the irresponsible thing of using tissue. Um, and I do that because if you wear a pad that you have to wash, not one that you are disposing of, um, if, it, if the blood gets dry on it, which will happen because you're barely bleeding on day five and six, it'll be very difficult to 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 um, extract that stain out of the pad. So I just do the, the tissue thing. now. After I show you guys how to do this tutorial that I'm going to show you, like I'm probably going to film it tomorrow. Um, after I show you guys how to do that, I may actually end up making panty liners. Um, so, and I'm, I'm probably not going to film that. However, I will add a comment into the video to show you what layers I use. Okay. Now, I want to just mention this very quickly. I, there's like this Indian thing okay the way that that uh some people in india view the period it's kind of like there, there are three things that need to be aligned in the body um and i don't know what they're called but i will link them here boop 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 um these three things need to be aligned and if any of them are out of whack like let's say if you're experiencing pain or you're very hungry or something like that it tells you okay well you need to do this so that you can bring this into alignment and you will no longer have that kind of discomfort I don't think that naturally we're supposed to have any kind of discomfort for such a natural process and I don't think that I'm supposed to be in that much pain because I've been experiencing these symptoms for about two years and to be honest with you for the last three months they've been kind of lightening up on me but like meaning like they're kind of going away and lifting out of my body and just not really bothering me anymore i don't know if it's like yoga meditation the way i'm eating but i'm not really experiencing the same what kind of what i'm telling you but this is kind of like i'm still sort of going through it if that makes sense but before this like two years of going through this 
I had like the best period ever. It, it was, there was like no pain, nothing. Everybody's like, oh, I'm struggling, I'm stressing. I'm, and I'm just like, bro, this is like another day for me. But I don't go, I don't have like that ease anymore. So it's like, I don't know what happened. I don't, this is also the last two years that I've been agoraphobic. So I don't know if it's like the drop in physical activity or whatever, but like, my period used to be so easy before and now it's just ridiculously difficult and I don't know what I did I don't know if it's anxiety not getting enough sleep this that that but it's I just feel like that's not normal and it's not normal for me to have to take um pills unless I have like some kind of um menstrual menstruation cycle disorder like it starts with an e I forgot what it was called I think endometriosis unless I have something like that which I don't think I do but yeah I don't leave the house currently like on, on a daily basis where I'm actually going places because of homebound um, agoraphobic problems but when I when I was going outside um, I'm gonna show you how I clean my pads so here at home all I do is I take this which is a, a knockoff or an um, generic brand that's what it's called <laughs> a version of OxyClean this is from the Dollar Tree and I put like a tiny little scoop in and then you use cold water, not hot water, because hot water sets blood. Um, so you use cold water, you agitate this into the water, the powder, until it dissolves, and then you put your pad in. And I continue to do that and change out the water until I no longer see blood, and then I scrub my pads with Dr. Bronner's. And the way that I squeeze them is like this. Let me show you. So like... <clears throat> Here are my pads, I made 13, although for my menstruation cycle, I only use 10, to be real. Um, so if you have a menstruation cycle similar to me, then I think that 10 is a really great number for you to use. So let's say if I have like blood here or whatever, and I bleed toward the front and center, however, I like my pads really long because I practice yoga, I don't sit like in conventional chairs and like on the bed much or a couch. I sit all over the floor. I'm like stretching out my legs all the time. I'm I'm stretching. I'm meditating. I'm cleaning. I'm I'm bending down and over and I'm working out. And there's so many things that I do because I don't have like a nine to five or I'm just sitting at a desk. So I like I like the security of having a longer pad just in case it shifts because they do. It doesn't have adhesive on the bottom like a traditional plastic pad that will just like glue down to your underwear. It's not like that. But um, even when I wore a pad like conventional pads I had I used to always get them with wings so I just want to say that anyway so I bleed toward this part and this part now um what I do is after after I put the, the Dr. Bronner's on because they're done soaking I go like this and then I flip it over I do the same thing and I go like that and then I run it under water and you press it like this you want to fold it roll it up how I just did and go like that. You don't want to just take your pad and just start wringing it all kind of ways because you're gonna mess up the core on the inside. So that's how you're gonna wash them. Now, if you're out and about in life, you know what I'm saying, experiencing the realness that's going on and you wanna change your pad like on campus or at work or wherever you are, um, you're going to fold it like this, then the other way, and then you're gonna snap, snap like so. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing and it's like all secure, you're good, nothing's gonna happen, and you put it in a bag that is lined with PUL, like a makeup bag or a pencil case. It's kind of like a plastic shower liner thingy, um, or you can get a bag or, or sew one up yourself that will be waterproof, that's why, just in case it gets pressed down and then like blood starts to come up, but I don't think you would like leave the pad on that long, you know, where it's like soaked, so I don't feel like you would really have that problem, but I'm just telling you that's how I used to do it when I was in business school right before I got this issue that I have. <laughs> anyway, now I'm going to talk to you about my core materials. So my topper, I would say try to upcycle as much as you can. If you have clothes, because you know you want to make like, you want to do this like really zero waste. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to like add more drama to the environment. Mother Nature don't need it. So you are going to um, try to upcycle as much as you can. Now my top layer is made of cotton. If you want to be dramatic, <laughs> then you can buy 100% organic cotton. And that's the cool thing about it is like you're going from plastic pads and you're having like all those horrible chemicals next to a very sensitive area. And then you're going to switch to something super natural like 100% organic cotton, hemp and other things like bamboo and other things that I don't even know about. Um, and so you want to do that because it's the most quickly absorbing and it's also not hot like, you know, like next to your, your area. Um, so it's like a cooling material. 
then your core is going to be comprised of three layers if you have a menstrual cycle like mine. Now, with making pads, I will prepare my pads for my heaviest day. My heaviest day is day number two. And so I want to make all my pads like day number two because when I'm sick and I'm not feeling good and I just want to change like multiple times a day, I don't want to think, okay, well, this pad's for day one, this one's for day two, this one's for this kind of flow, this one's for that kind of flow. I don't want to think about it. So all of my pads are for a heavy flow because I'm not trying to sew all these different pads up. But if you want to do it that way, you can actually change the color of your snap. So you could do like red for the heaviest day, orange for like medium, and yellow for a light day. Okay, so your core is made up of three materials, as I was saying. Um, the first, your topper is going to be something called Zorb, the first layer of your core. And that is for baby diapers. So if you're having something like incontinence um, or a heavy menstruation, Zorb can handle it. You understand? Zorb can absorb all that. And the reason why it's the second layer is because you want every single layer in the middle of your core, you want it to be absorbent. So Zorb, the cool thing about it is that it does it very quickly. It absorbs everything very quickly. Um, so nothing is staying on the cotton layer or your first layer for a long time. The two layers under that, they're going to be the same and they're going to be flannel. Flannel is also super absorbent. However, it is hot. So you don't you don't necessarily want to put it as your the first layer of your core, but it goes on the bottom because it's sl it's slow absorbing. So after the absorb is all filled up, um, those other two layers are added protection and they and they absorb all of the liquid slowly. And now if you want your pads to be waterproof, then the next layer you're going to want to do is PUL, which is kind of like that plastic shower liner that I'm comparing it to. Um, I don't need mine to be waterproof because I don't have like a super heavy flow, but um, if you do, then you may want to consider looking into that. And I'm going to link somebody's channel down, down below that I think is a boss. Like she doesn't even have a lot of subs and she doesn't even have like millions of views on her cloth pad videos. And for me, out of everybody, when I was doing research on this, she was the best. She talks a lot like I do, which is very good because you want to know all the deets. And she was answering every single person back. So I was able, if, she, if I had a question and somebody had my same question, she'd answer that person. So like for me, she was detrim detrimental in my life. And her name is Amy Nix, A-M-Y space N-I-X. I will link her down below. She has videos on upcycling, choosing fabrics for your topper and your, and your base. And she also has um, videos for your core. So I just think that she's very important. Now, I wanted mine to be water resistant and not waterproof. Waterproof means if I throw water all over it, it will never be penetrated. However, if I throw water on the back of fleece, it'll be able to roll around like this, right? I'll be able to go like, ooh. Now, it's not until I actually rub it in that it will be absorbed. And the reason why that's different from the top is because if I throw any kind of liquid on the top, it's going to immediately fall through. It's not going to, you know, the bead of water isn't going to rotate around like it would with fleece. So what you want to do is not press on it. Now, the cool thing is I'm sitting down on the floor. I'm moving and doing all this stuff. This doesn't get penetrated by, you know, if you have enough liquid in, if you don't change it, um, then it will. But if you change it often, then it won't. It won't leak. So for the next video, I want you to have a few things prepared. You are going to want to have um, the four materials that I discussed today. If you want to, you can include the PUL. You're also going to want to have your sewing machine and thread in tow. If not, you can have a needle and thread because you can do them by hand. You're going to want to have a snap kit if you want to do it that way. If not, you can do metal snaps, which I personally think are cooler. Um, and you can actually sew metal snaps in rather than actually having to buy a snap kit, which is a special kind of button. And you are going to want to have paper or a thick paper or cardboard so that we can create the template and some measuring tape or a ruler and a pen. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Um, please leave me any comments or questions that you have down below. And I will have that video up in about a week or two. I will see you on the next video. Bye.